What would happen if Italy left the Euro? Would they be able to cope? Could they handle using the Lira once again? This certainly wouldn't be an easy task as it would bring about a global recession as the threat of a complete breakdown of the EU would commence. The ECB would ramp up the printing presses in response to the stock markets falling rapidly. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at an issue that's been going on for years. Who will be the first to shake off the technocrats? That's right, we've had this in talks before. Is Greece going to exit? Are we going to have a Brexit? And what about an Italexit? Well, today we're talking about the Plan B. Essentially, in the event that Italy is unable to sort out its mess, it would leave. And that is an option. So they've discussed this behind closed doors. It's not an official government policy that's going to happen tomorrow. But there are some out there which have started to talk about it. And I think it is important to at least understand the potential. So today we're going to talk about that, but I also wanted to show you Target. Now, Target is very important, the new version being Target 2. I'm going to break this down. And essentially what I'm trying to get at is for you to understand the financial system. I don't like to get into which stock to buy today, which stock is better to buy tomorrow. That really isn't what I talk about on here, and a lot of people have learned that now. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is empower you to reverse engineer the financial system, and then you can make your own educated decisions. It's just like understanding health. Many people read studies. The people who eat these type of foods tend to have less of these conditions, therefore these foods are healthy. Well, the way I do it, this may seem irrelevant, but hang on with me just a second. What I do instead is learn the anatomy. I want to know the anatomy of the human being inside and out, and then I could decide for myself which exercise is the best, which foods are the best, all the different things that I will not get into more here. It is reverse engineering. Now, I make that decision myself. I don't need to rely on a study that is obviously biased and paid for by one group or another. So this is the way I do it. And the exact same thing with the financial system. I've been doing this. I did it in my books, uh, especially the first book. And this here will tell us what the financial system is up to when you understand what's really underlying it. You see stocks, you see bonds, you know, that's like macronutrients. You see carbs, protein, and fat. Well, it goes into a lot deeper than that, of course. Of course, everybody knows that. Now, okay, enough ranting. The payment system, Target 2, the second generation, trans-European, automated, real-time, gross settlement, express transfer system, that's a mouthful, is based on a single shared technical platform, SSP, and is used for real-time gross settlement of payments in euro and in the central bank money. The platform enables a single technical procedure for submitting, receiving, and processing high-value payments, okay? It's an important system, and we need to understand the amount of money that flows through it and how it interconnects with other financial systems. Let me just show you really quickly. By the way, different central banks are connected to it. The three right here, Germany, Italy, and France. One important point that I wanted to make was that it interacts directly with SWIFT and it's using that, and you'll know about SWIFT, especially those countries out there who are the, let's just say, the bad boys of the world aren't able to use this system, and it completely crushes them. That's how important SWIFT is. Okay, so you'll see that how that, you know, ultimately interconnects with the world at different levels, all right? Okay, moving on, moving on. Got to be quick. This right here is directly from the Bundesbank own website and 
couple points that I want to make here. Number one, the target two claims for the Bundesbank are basically a trillion euro. That's gigantic. Now I want to get into a lot of this as much as I can. I'll move through it as quickly as possible. I know your time is very precious. Okay, Target 2 is a payment system that enables the speedy and final settlement of national and cross-border payments in central bank money. An average of around 340,000 payments with a value of about 1.7 trillion euro is processed using Target 2 each day. 1.7 trillion euro a day. During a whole year, Target 2 settles about 90 million payments with a value of 450 trillion euro. Massive, massive importance right here. Okay, and I'll tell you why this is important in a second. These payments transactions can take a wide variety of forms such as payment for goods delivery, the purchase of a sale of a security, the granting or repayment of a loan, or the depositing of funds at a bank, among many others. So it is a critical critical part of the financial system, all right? Target 2, the Euro system's high-value payment system, may run on a single-share platform, SSP, but legally speaking, is made up of component systems operated by the national central banks and the ECB. All right, quickly, quickly, I just want to just touch on a couple more points. I found it to be so informative and really uh, helps you understand how this works. Thus, both the Bundesbank and the Bank de France will be involved in a cross-border payment transaction made in a settlement of a German export to France. For instance, that transaction begins when the French importer's commercial bank in France debits the purchase amount from the importer's account and submits a credit transfer in Target 2 to the German exporter's commercial bank in Germany. Then in France, they debit the amount from the Target 2 account. It operates. So basically, it's, it's like an in-between, right? Think of it like a middleman. Now, this is exactly where we have a lot of problems, and I think that this is actually a bad thing, but that's the way it works, all right? There's a lot more details, and I definitely want you to read this if you have the time, if you want to understand how it all works. I think it's important, but I don't want to be here uh, reading your story all day. So understand that they act as a middleman intermediary however you want to call it and this is very important because without this we are going to have a big issue because that's the system that's set up today we can have we can do so much better we don't need this right but if suddenly there's a problem within it then it's going to be haywire for that near term and when you look at this target two, understand what country owes the other. And remember, I, just above, I showed you that Germany, their claims are near a trillion euro. One trillion euro. Well, who's owing? All right. The German debate on the balances of the Target 2 payment clearing system continues to rage. There are two reasons for this. On the one hand, the Bundesbank Target 2 credit with the euro system was $976 billion. At the end of June, it's within weeks of exceeding the symbolic figure of $1 trillion. On the other hand, check this out, Germans have taken notice of Paolo Savona's plan B for Italy to exit the euro, which involved defaulting on Italy's external debt, including its target to balance, which is under 481 billion euro and growing. Big, big deal. We are talking about 500 billion, essentially. 500 billion euro. Imagine if they were to default on 500 billion dollars, billion euro, excuse me. The chaos that would ensue following that. You would have country after country considering the same thing. It would be absolute pandemonium for a period of time. The central bank could not print enough money in, in, in a short period of time to make up for the shortfall. There's no way they would have to, as I like to call it, confettiize the currency, the garbage euro. So we've got an issue here. This right here shows us very clearly where we're at.
If you look at just Italy and Spain, we've got big problems. Nearly a trillion right there. They are negative in their balances. Target two. And that is a very, very bad sign. Of course, other end of the spectrum, Germany here, nearly that trillion euro, as you can see. Other countries, not so bad. France, and so on. But these are the two biggest offenders, Spain and Italy. And we have to watch them very clearly. In my first book and second book, I talked about it, how the this was published back in 2012. I wrote it in 2011. Talking about the fact that, all right, Greece is going to need some bailouts. Okay, I predicted the second bailout. I predicted the, that they would need more and more and more. That's coming now. Here you can see what's going on. I talked about now the eyes are on Italy and Spain. Nothing has changed since because it's actually getting worse. The amount of bailouts that are taking place, whether it's the CSPP program from the ECB or others, all I can see is that these two countries are heavily, heavily indebted to Germany for one. I'd like to know where they intend on being able to make up for the shortfall. This just keeps heading downward. How? How are they ever going to turn it around? It just there's there's no way. There's absolutely no way when they're shackled by this current system that they're in. These target two balances show us the weakness of this system. All right. So this is some information that I was able to pull. It's quotes from this report that they had done about the plan B, about exiting the euro and so on. Once the announcement of the exit from the euro has been made, close the banks, preventing any banking transactions, including cash withdrawals. That, that's just, that's huge. Capital controls, bank holidays will be called. Think about that. And this will have to happen, obviously, if they're going to make a switch from the euro currency or just pulling out for one. And I don't, I don't know if they'll decide to still use the currency, if they'll stay in the union but not use the currency. That's, you know, we'll see if they are even able to leave. We've seen the Brexit has been unsuccessful thus far. And they don't even have the currency. This here would have to happen. But it's something I worry about all the time. People will not be able to get their money. And are you going to know in advance? Oh, on the 15th, we're going to shut down the banks. So we're going to let you know in, a, in advance. Two weeks from now, we're going to shut down the banks for a little while. So take all your preparations. Absolutely not. It's going to be a Friday. They're going to announce it. Oh, banks are shut down. You're screwed. That's it. You can't get your money out. Your money is right now, as of this time, it's going to be worth, who knows, more? Is it less? I don't know. But they're going to shut you out and you're going to have to scramble for that period of time. What if something really bad happened? You needed money right then and there. You're not going to get it. And how long will they shut the bank down for? Three days, five days, a week, two weeks. It's a big problem that they're encountering. It's not going to happen overnight. What's that money going to be worth on the other end? Nobody really knows. I would assume that the lira would be significantly devalued versus the euro. But right like as soon as it launches, I think this would be really, really uh, volatile. So people's value is going to be jumping all around. Imports and exports are going to be all messed up. Businesses are going to be in a sort of wait and see kind of moment. Businesses will not be hiring for a period of time. They may actually lay off people as a result. The financial industry is going to go down. We've got problems. And this right here is, I think it's a good thing. Let me just reiterate this. 
which I have many times before, but there's always new people. I think that the entire euro area should be just, everybody should leave that currency, everybody should just separate themselves and then create agreements between two countries. That's it. If Italy wants to do trade with Germany, Italy should do trade with Germany. They shouldn't need to go through any other third-party systems, okay? They should be set up in such a way that there's no third-party involvement. I don't care if it's Target 2, I don't care if it's SWIFT, I don't care if it's any, you know the EU or the Euro currency. I want to see laneways, highways, roads built in between two nations. That's it. The more competition there is, the better. There's no need for us to be utilizing all of these different systems that have been set up by some sort of entity. Nobody knows who the hell it is. And for that to be the way that we do business. I don't like it. I really don't. Italy government at the GDP, we can see that the situation they are in is no different than many others. It just gets worse and worse. And they've been covering this up for years. Look at where it has gone since the financial crisis up until today. It's only going to get worse as time goes on. The burdens of debt are very, very clear. And they will have to, if they want to get this debt down, they're going to have to default on at least some of their debt. There's just no way out of it. I don't think that that's going to end very well, but that's the only way. Whether or not they'll do that, who knows? Maybe the ECB will come in and buy it up monetize it we'll see that's all for this video i hope that you found it informative if you did please give me a thumbs up last but not least if you want the financial education you were not taught in schools these two books have it all i get into the financial system and how it all works within these two particularly if you want to know the foundation the history that would be in the money gps if you want to know a very shorter concise book well they sort of fit into each other they cover information that is related but i do get into different topics so both of them obviously are very very important you could check those out link is in the description if you are more interested in the audiobook version you can get that at the moneygps.com